Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a brand new series of Crusader Kings 2 Historical Immersion Project or HIP for short. This time it's set on a completely different start date which I actually set on a certain day, month and year. Which it is on the 20th of November 1236 AD. Now typically I do not start playthroughs you know kind of late. Um, Although not like 1300s, but around that time late. Um, which I have my reasons, and it's for it's for a historically significant character that is often overlooked and even forgotten by many, at least to the world at large, but maybe a bit well known in in one's country, in a part of it, anyhow. Before I get to that, I mean, look at the political situation at this time. This is obviously during the uh, the Mongol invasions era, where um, where it's been nearly ten years since the death of Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire fractured into multiple entities, thus leaving with the Il Khanate, the Golden Horde, the Khaganate of Chagatai, the Khaganate of Mongolia, and the Western Protectorate under the Yuan Empire. Uh, which is the Mongol Empire in China as a separate entity. <laughs> that man is its current ruler. And this is where it all comes from. From Kagan Temujin, also known as Genghis Khan. So yes, he died at 1227 at age 65. So yes, it's been nearly 10 years. And since the Mongol pages occur. And of course, you know, traits on historical characters typically correct. Somewhat. Oh, and I forgot to mention, he's also the founder of this bloodline is Temujin. So that's what they have and you ought to watch out for them. Nobody is safe. No matter what continent you're on. As they have, you know, all these entities uh, tributary, including the High Chiefdom of Kabulistan, interestingly enough. Which again, likes concubines but doesn't like Byzantine cultures. Even though they're kind of far away from any contact because the nearest Byzantine culture out there. Well, actually, I mean, that's the foreign Byzantine Empire itself, but technically, well, Georgia, which is a Byzantine culture, well, <laughs> you, that's unfortunate for you because, you know, they don't like you. And, and also around that time period, that's when the Kingdom of uh, Jerusalem is still hanging on to its coastal holdings at the most part as they do not have Jerusalem itself ever since um, these guys from this Sultanate took it back. The Reconquista was still ongoing at this time. While, you know, a good portion of Andalusia is still under Muslim control. The Holy Roman Empire dominates Central Europe and Italia. And, um, and as we pointed out near the Byzantine Empire formerly area, there's the Latin Empire that was formed nearly 30 years ago. Over 30 years ago. Ever since the Fourth Crusade. Thus some of these areas are fractured, making the Balkans region a bit messy. Including this one area that is a tributary state to Hungary. Bosnia, where it's ran by Bogomolists, which if you recall my Crusader Kings 3 series as Bosnia, <coughs> the Bogomolist faith here in this game is a placeholder, one would think, of the Christiani faith, which is in no way resembling the Bogomolist um, faith with those kind of tenets, if you will. Which again, the Bosnian series on Crusader Kings 3, I suggest you check it out. It's probably the best Crusader Kings 3 series I've ever done. Until the next one, of course, because I haven't 
done much of Crusader Kings 3 since then, and that's why I'm on here, because there's some things I want to do. And, and that's the reason why we're here in this series, as we will be heading east to northern India. This here is the Iltumishi Khaganate. It is ran by the Turkish, huh, or Turkic. I mean, not, you know, the Turkish of the Sultanate of uh, Rum, those guys. It's like, yes, uh, culture is similar, but but the Turkic over here is distinctive in itself. <coughs> and before we introduce you to a ruler, let me address you people what kind of mods am I using for this um, particular series? Which I don't know if it'll be short term or not. It might as well be short term. I mean, you got only. Again, you start relatively late in this timeline. So. So listen up, ladies and gentlemen. These are the list of mods I'm using. Which I'll still read out loud anyway. And you can also look up the list of mods that I'm using in this series uh, below on the description of this video. The mods that I'm using are Artifact Acquisition and Overhaul, Christian Immersion Mod. Cultural Bonuses, Cultural Cities Remix, Dark Ages Version 1.21, the HIP, we mentioned before, Historical Merchant Project, Patron Deities, Soulmates, the Great Trade League, the Orders of Chivalry, the Sufi Schools, in relevance to this particular playthrough, University, um, Viet Events Reborn, which is again, that's um, various immersion events and tales. And finally, spouse empowerment. So those are the mods that I'm using in, for this series. Quite similar to the past series with, you know, Prussia and Sogdia. And now we're doing this here in this cognate, which is what also is known as in actual history as the Delhi Sultanate. It's a series of firsts. Not only I'm starting as a country that is of an imperial empire tier level, instead of a county or duchy tier, which I often start as such. And it's also the first that I'm playing as a Muslim um, in this video series, anyhow, here on the Lord Master channel. And it's also the first time that I'm playing as a character who is female that is a Muslim which you don't often see that at that and by the way not a ruler designer but I mean an actual historical figure and let me introduce you to this woman right now her name is Katun Razia Katun is the Turkic Mongolic word uh, for you know Empress equivalent to Kagan uh, Khan and Kagan and the Katun the female form of it is actually both. And Razia, as that's her, how her name is spelled, she is popularly known as Razia Sultana. Even though if you were to tell her, to address her as such personally, she would not like it when you call her Sultana. She would prefer to be called Sultan. Yes, Sult. And as you can see, again, some characters, including historical ones, start with random traits. So, she got skilled tactician, skilled fighter. She is crowned, because this is literally day one of her reign, and she's crowned. Officially coordinated. She is just, deceitful, gregarious, and diligent. So, she's mostly good, but can be a rather bit deceitful. Even though she has no husband and no children of her own. So again, Razia is the was the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate. As she was the first female Muslim ruler of the Indian subcontinent and the only female Muslim ruler of Delhi. So that's why I chose to play as this character on this particular day. Because it's a rather fascinating historical figure, which again doesn't get often talked about, even in India. So she is the daughter of the Mamluk Sultan, 
and not to be confused with the Mamluks of Egypt. Because Mamluk means slave, so they're of the slave dynasty. Padishah is the Turkish equivalent of Kagan, or emperor, if you will, and whatnot. So, that's her father. Um, Shamsuddin Utamish. Um, which, again, part of the uh, Mamluk dynasty, but we use the name Hasam Utamishi, which is one would think it's a cadet branch. <laughs> so, during her time, um, when she was younger, as she's 31 years old here, and we don't know her actual birth of date, other than she was born in 1205. She administered Delhi during 1231 and 1232, when her father was busy in a Gavali World campaign, which is... Whoa, okay, um, which is um, over here. According to the possible Akraga legend, impressed by her performance during this period, Utamish uh, nominated Razia as his heir apparent after returning to Delhi. He was succeeded by Razia's half brother, um, Ognun Ferus, which is him over here. As you can see, died of a natural death, but that's not the case. That's just the way the game does it. Not the case for what happened to Ferus here. And uh, whose mother, um, that's uh, Shah Turgon. I plan to execute her, execute Ratz, during a rebellion against um, uh, Nuknunun, uh, Ruknunun, excuse me. Razia instigated the general public against uh, Shatokan uh, and ascended the throne after he was disposed of in 1236. So that's what happened. And that's how Razia became this first female Muslim ruler of the, of the subcontinent, and the only one. But however, her reign lasted less than four years. Um, which to be exact, three years, six months, and six days. It's a, one of those cases of, you know, again, the nobles who supported her thought it's like, oh, she's going to be a figurehead and they'll have a, you know, a proper successor. But she increasingly asserted herself, um, such as, for example, her initial coins were issued with her father's name. But by 1237 and 38, she had started issuing coins solely in her name. <laughs> Which sounds like it doesn't go well with the Turkic nobles there. <laughs> or with any monarchy in general, because, you know, how patriarchal society was in general, not just in Islamic countries, but Christian Europe as well in some cases, especially in the earlier medieval eras and such. In which, interestingly, there are a few characters of her life that's actually in this court right now, such as this um, Ethiopian, or what was then um, Abyssinian, Jamal Uddin Yaqut. Yeah, he was uh, one of her advisors. <laughs> but in this case, with the random traits, well, he's an imbecile, unfortunately. Shy, deceitful, proud, arbitrary. But again, this being Crusader Kings 2, it does not aim to reflect history. At least most of the time, because once the date starts, well, that's just how the world was in this situation. And then as it progresses, it just, well... <laughs> It's alternate history from then on there. So, again, Razia Sultan ascended the throne because nobles supported her. But some did, some did, and some didn't. Of course, and, and even she even um, gave positions to officials towards non Muslims, such as her, you know, Hindu subjects. But again, it's a land full of Hindus, Jains, and Buddhists. But that's in population majority, which can't be proven. Whereas Buddhism around this time, that's when they were just mostly driven out to Tibet and never really came back to India till a much, much later time, except for pilgrimage reasons. 
So now, let's get down to business on this game here as Razia. She controls 55 counties, and you are not supposed to control that many. You're supposed to only have six as this limit based on her stewardship skill and whatnot, which can lead to a lot of problems in stability, especially with um, Imperial Decay, which is a feature that's found in the Historical Immersion Project. And plus, some vassals like her, um, because, well, <laughs> she had a military background, apparently, but she is a skilled fighter. Some do, some don't. And others will say, oh, you've got too many duchies. Some want to see them in the council. Some are ambitious. And you've got to give them certain land to somebody that they have their jaw control. Well, I'm going to spare you the time with, um... Distributing all the counties at the beginning because that's gonna take a lot of minutes, but but I'll say this real quick another thing uh, about her Razia is as I said before that That she's kind of a bit of a forgotten note some Forgot about her some well didn't I mean in popular culture at least in Indian popular culture There are a few movies um, about her and there's even a um, a pretty good TV series, um, as far as reception is concerned. There's a TV series that came out in 2015, simply called Razia Sultan, um, which um, actually, uh, me personally, I'm actually kind of interested in watching it, not because of the relevance of this series, it's just... <laughs> I don't watch a lot of Indian TV. Um, I mean, I watch more Indian movies than with TV. Uh, TV shows, TV series. And I know it has about a hundred and eighty some odd episodes, which is a tendency of theirs um, for long running Indian uh, series, no matter what language it is. And I don't know if that's available on Netflix or wherever I can find them. I mean, if any of you Indian viewers that are familiar with, with what I'm talking about with this TV series, I mean, can you send me a, a link or where can I watch it? As I'm kind of interested in whatnot. Even though I've seen other Indian shows before. Such as Maha Bharat. Um, Bharat at Koj. And uh, Chanakya. <laughs> and now in, in in the future. Near future. I'll be watching um, Razia Sultan. Which of course as you can see in that portrait. Doesn't look anything like you know. The actresses that played as her. Which they often make her prettier than one would imagine. I mean, she's not groomed nor born attractive. That's just how she is. Even though when you get a good look at her face, she looks kind of a bit naive to be in this position. But again, noble supporter. Her father chose her because she did real good administration work. Maybe that's the reason why she has the just trait, one would think. But we'll get our priorities straight. So allow me to... Um, Stop recording right now. They will be back recording in one second after I will distribute all these counties um, to give it to those who need them and more. Okay, that took me a bit longer than expected with the whole, you know, distribute the counties and uh, duchies and whatnot. Unless you want to call it in Turkish terms. These are Balex. And the uh, Bayer Balex. Bayer Balex is duchy and Balex is county. And uh, Timar is barony. And it's sultanate. And then you got the Kaganate. So we know that technically the title is the Empire of Rajasthan. But for the sake of the title of this series and, and what the country was called back then uh, at that time. This is the Delhi Sultanate. Now I gave away most of them, except for a select two, which I may still have a giveaway, but we'll do that in just a moment. So, after giving away so many counties to mostly Muslims and some Hindus, everybody is happy. Well, most of it, anyway. But some of them are happy because they are attracted to Razia because. She's gregarious, and uh, 
a skilled fighter, which, you know, kind of makes makes your average person think. It's like, oh, she must be something. And due to giving away those counts, yeah, knowing I can't control the whole domain because of penalties of taxation and levies, um, that it would be reduced. So due to this reduction, we're now 1,000 strong. But if I wanted to increase centralization, I can. But as a Muslim, you're going to need 100 piety for this. Which doesn't sound too hard. Now here's a problem in playing as a female Muslim ruler. There's no such thing as matrilineal marriage. If you want matrilineal lineage, you've got to have notable status of women. No, um, uh, that's a lot of change. Okay, hang on. because I know somewhere is it gender preference laws or this one? It's either of those two where it's not just gender laws, but it's the idea of matrilineal marriage. Which means if I were to get married to somebody, then um, that means it's, it's going to be born of the husband's dynasty. And it would be an early game over. So probably I should just remain unmarried until, oh, I turn 30, uh, excuse me, 45. <laughs> 45 years old where we no longer be at a childbearing age and then you could just marry to whoever. And get away with it. And plus this is just to spite my brother and uh, sister. Mostly the brothers anyhow. Or any of those children. I mean look at the line of succession here. Baram, Masood, and Mahmood. And I didn't give a land to any of these um, people. <laughs> so yeah. Screw you, mother. As it was historically. Of course, that's where the historical resemblance ends. So, not get married. Could make a friend. I don't know about seeing the realm prosper. I mean, if I wanted to go to war, I'd be willing. But the problem is, huh, it's going to be holy wars or conquests and whatnot. And there's a cooldown at such a thing. Oh yes, convert a province. Yeah, why not? Easiest thing in the world. All I need is a new court imam. The Bay of Asni. He's a genius. And I know I do not have enough money to start creating these uh, Bayabedic titles to give it to those who want them. Just to make uh, things of realm management easier. So let's prolethize starting here in our capital of Delhi. Yes, I moved it from Kandia Kubja to Delhi. But of course, none of these guys, except for this one, are powerful vassals, so I know some of you love me, but surely there could be some more talented people. Like this man. I put a steward, a courtier, but... Uh, oh, no, no, absent-minded doesn't affect stewardship, so I guess it's the best you got. But we'll deal with uh, what little remains of this county, which again, I'll break it down of what I actually control. So yes, it looks like a mess on the inside, but if I have a lot of money and time where we can keep creating these bear relics and give it to those who really want them, I'd be willing. And don't forget that the vassals that will fight wars um, without my consensus. Like, for example, if I wanted this, it's going to be for a holy war or conquest. But, however, it does cost piety when you start single body county conquest. But, fortunately, there's, there's the Zhou War. Surprisingly. But winning a holy wars will give you a hundred piety. 
Maybe you, maybe this is a way to get the law to get a bit of that centralization up. Because keep in mind, this is this different form of government. So the Arabic um, system is similar to the feudal system. Rulers must rely on land holding vassals of varying loyalty and ambition. The maximum number of vassals and the number of holdings I could directly hold are controlled by decentralization law. However, there is only one form of succession available. The chaotic open type, where the son with the most land inherits. Um, if you should convert to a non-Muslim religion, your government form will change the feudal. And keep in mind that I can hold um, temple holdings, mosques, if you will. <laughs> but since I'm uh, female, that does not matter. <laughs> we'll think about that. And since um, Grazia Sultana, I mean uh, Sultan, <laughs> sorry, have it, because, you know, for historical reference, which again, she doesn't like to be called Sultana because that simply means consort of a Sultan. So she wants to be called Sultan. But in Crusader Kings context, she's Khatun, Turkish, uh, Turko Mongol equivalent to Epirus. And since she has a martial background, we'll go for war. And we're gonna apply that trade of warfare by joining this particular society. Oh, and by the way, um, since I have the Sufi, the, the Sufi uh, schools mod, they have for Sunni, Shia, and Ibadi Islam, their own versions of a monastic society. Where Oh, they have these things. These are uh, features. Even though those terms, um, including that word, I mean, like Baba uh, for male, and then there's Mama for a female. If I wish to be a pious person, I can join it. If I have a lot of money because of my, you know, high income. I mean, I could draw that, but learning skills not that great to begin with. So, there's no need to be a pious woman yet. So, instead, I will be joining the Ring of Honor. A fighter skilled society. The current champion is this Russian man. Which again, the Ring of Honor um, Society is available for cultures who are North Germanic, East Slavic, all things, um, which does include, you know, Turkish. There's also a Sunni Holy Order, the Bektashi Order. Which I cannot join because I'm a woman. So fine by me. I'm a skilled fighter, so I want to apply my trade here in the Ring of Honor. Well met, Razia. You have the highest honor to receive a letter from me, Ruslan, the champion of the Ring of Honor, the greatest warrior this world has ever known. I have no doubt you wish to bask in my glory in person, so I hereby allow you to join us as we clash steel and bleed together. Good luck, and may your blade never dull. For glory. Somewhat good income, 1.5, because a martial, skilled, tactician, diligent, and deceitful. Be it for the tradition or the favors of their gods, warriors have always solved their conflicts by spilling the blood of unworthy parties. Only the mightiest can ever hope to stand in a ring of honor without meeting a swift death. These brave heroes will do everything they can to prove themselves, even further, and make their legends the greatest. Uh, by quelling the strongest of foes. So, as I said, that's where the historical resemblance of Razia Sultan ends. It's like she decides on her very first day of, of her rule, and due to having what it, what claims to be, it's like, yeah, she did very well in administration, but now she wants to be a tough fighter. Anyways, let's get a cartographer, so... 
we can get an idea. I'll give it to my sister. Um, of what kind of resources we have around here. Not a lot. I mean, nothing in Delhi, but since I control Hastinapura, there's a flax field that'll give a good amount. I have um, Depaupur, which has an ivory hunter's lodge. That's a very good amount. And there's better with sense works. Okay, these are good resources, actually. Which, again, for this is from the Great Trade League mod. If you have these resources under your domain in your control, you will make money off of it. But if you are a member of the Great Trade League Society, you will get them as trade goods for you to sell them or send shipment to your local counties to make more profits as well as a few other bonuses. As well as if there's a deliver trade goods mission, you deliver the set thing to them. And obviously Razia does not have a stewardship education, so we will not apply the Great Trade League um, to use, as she's already part of the Ring of Honor. She wants to be, you know, one of the toughest female warriors out there. Which, matter of fact, is she the only one out there that is a female warrior of this fighter skill society? Ah, oh, yes, she is. What do you know? Again, seven novices, 18 veterans, nine pretenders, and only one champion. Him. And again, the Grand Vizier, while not as good, but he's a powerful vassal. I mean, there's plenty of other powerful vassals out there, but... They all like me well enough because I gave them land. We'll worry about them at a later time. Simply for the sake of it. And also, I can go to the Hajjan, um, to the Mecca, whenever I wish to. Which is able, every able-bodied Muslim must, is expected to do once in their life. And decadent characters will get rid of that trait. Well, I'm not worried about decadent because we just started and there's no decadent relatives in this dynasty of ours as we are a small family, aren't we? Look up your family tree. Yes, not very much. It's relatively new. What you got? The Delhi Sultanate has been around for slightly more than 30 years. As a matter of fact, it was formed around the same year as the Fourth Crusade, 1204. And uh, and I may give away a few more counties. Keyword may. And may start a holy war against them. Just for starters. Unless you want to pick on someone weaker. I mean, we can utilize our force with great ease. Oh, yes. You, you're going to be the designated regent because you're the best of the diplomacy skills. The genius will be the court decision. And I've all assigned all the commanders, which I'm sure it'll be given to those who are the best at their job. And I gotta create all these titles, which they cost plenty of gold, which you need to wait on that. Or they can create it themselves if they make money, so I don't have to do it. It'll make realm management much easier for me. The only thing I should worry about is, well, the Elkanite. Look at their levies. And the event spawn troops. They could attack the Abbasids. They could attack them. Um, Sultan of Rome. Georgia. This um, little independent entity. Yeah, there's something screwy going on with this one. Um, but you get the idea. And uh, 
Hell, potentially me. So, don't rush into such things. You need to prepare for a defense if they're going to launch an invasion. I mean, they are feudal realms, so... I can't guarantee it. But I'm only sending the Imam to convert Delhi here. And then I may send him to ask the uh, the Kagan if he, wish if he wants to convert to Islam. Which would be the safest thing in the world. If not, then he's going to look at us. I mean, the Mongols did invade the Delhi Sultanate, but that didn't happen until later this century. And so, we've wasted enough time here, so, um, let's get started right now. We passed one day in the Arsia. A group of Khazars have formed themselves to a military order and have taken the name of the Arsia. Originally mercenaries and serfs to the Khazar Khaganate, the uh, Arsia were sworn never to fight fellow Muslims and formed an important part of the Khazar military. Now reborn, they are ready to serve Sunni lords against their religious enemies. They could be useful. In fact, these holy orders here could be additional backup if, um, if we're dealing with the struggles of the Okanin. So... Now my domain size limit is reduced to 5, so I do have to indeed give something away. And in fact, it just grew up. Actually, that's, most of that comes from the strength of the vassal levies, not the domain levies, where I don't get enough strength of it because of the penalty. I understand. But again, more interested in just win a quick holy war, and then... um. You'll get the piety, and use the set piety to get plus one at the domain size. And once you have that domain size, then we'll start giving away the rest. So I'm not terribly worried right now, so let's just pack them first. Holy War for Ajma. All they got is um, three holdings. But beware. Other Hindu realms may attack, especially the Parama Kingdom and the Sunayadava, which that one's going to be the closest rivalry with them. In fact, all of them. But if we bring all of our forces here and take their defenses down quickly, and then you'll win. Before they even get together and, and come on over here. Do you really want that in your conscience? Just in case. But oh, the easiest thing in the world is just go to the Hajj immediately. Even though you're going to spend a lot of money for this. And Commissioner Quran, you need a lot more than that. And you have to focus on scholarship or theology or have the ambition to become paragon of virtue. And there's all these sort of things. That relates to the fighter skill. Be patient, alright? Bulls of Rishabha. The followers of the Jayan faith have always followed the central tenet of showing respect to all living creatures and to refrain from violence. Even the most power peaceful of men must occasionally go to war. As such, a new order has been founded, named the Bulls of Rishabha. They swear loyalty to all Jayan rulers against those who would do them harm. A most devout man named Durga Simha has pledged himself to undertake the leadership of the order to preserve their way of life. Huh. As a such rabble would save him. Residing in Rantambur. Only giants can use that. Oh yeah. 
we used to make so much money, but not so much now because of that domain limit. It's putting a strain on the economy, including the the uh, domain levies, which is which does no good to nobody. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna compromise on this. Um, that's regarding resources, because the resources I want to keep. One here, one there. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I didn't think about the Silk Road. Have up to four. I personally own Delhi and Lahore. I kind of want to keep Lahore. So, giveaway shortcut. To the mosque owner. Master schemer, but not good in the intrigue. Okay, that's for starters. Oh yeah, I forgot I own this Timar that's in uh, Mandana Vayapura, which is owned by the Rajputs of the Chauhan Raj. But one area in particular belongs to me, but I'll have to give that to a new vassal. This man, this administration. Peaceful and serene. At the end, just do the story. Do we really have to? It's been a very nice experience bringing Dark Ages together over the years with a considerable amount of time involved. Recently, I decided to set up a PayPal donation page for the kind souls who want to buy me a coffee for. If you feel like that, just click on the donate link at the top of the description section of in the Dark Ages Steam page, or press the donate button in the Dark Ages thread in the Paradox forum. Thank you for the free coffee. I don't want to be intrusive at all, so you don't change characters and continue playing with the same dynasty. This message will happen twice per game. The other message, 75 game years from now after you take your time playing the Dark Ages some more, independently of your decision. It's a pleasure for me that you picked the Dark Ages to play with. Thank you. That's from the message from the guy who made this mod. My infancy has been defined by brawls, fights, and physical contests. Really? <laughs> I was never fond of playing with the other girls um, whom I found annoying and futile. Instead, preferring a company of boys. And now that I grew up, it's time to see and to see if I'll be a Tommy boy for my life or instead follow a more traditional role. Which, by the way, in the uh, Dark Ages mod, this is what happens when you do not have the full status of women's law and uh, and a feature that they says fewer women generals, just to reflect the realism of, you know, the Middle Ages at that time. Because you don't get a lot of female generals in some realms. Unless you're... A pagan with shield maidens, which is a diff totally different case. Um, I can either just get rid of my martial background and go for either of these four. But no, I will be a maverick forever. Which again, you could do that if you just started playing as a female character off of a start, or suddenly in the line of succession you play as a female character but has not yet reached adulthood that you are getting a martial education where that choice is given so there you have it good to know um where was it Trade posts. Trade posts. Chosen of Ashoka. To safeguard the teachings of Buddha, many have banded together to form a new holy order. They named themselves the Chosen of Ashoka, named after the great emperor of the same name. Guided by the leadership of a cunning warrior known as a Pola Shakti, the, or, the order is found to be the sword of any Buddhist ruler struggling against foreign conquerors and turn the tide of battle. And also the followers of Arjuna. 
The Hindu faith is one of the oldest religions in the world, yet nothing will last forever unless it is defended. Therefore, a great effort has been made to establish a new holy order. They call themselves the followers of Arjuna, led by a fearless warrior named um, uh, Vigrapala. Vigrahabala. They swear to answer the call of all devoted followers of Brahma to help them in their wars against the infidels and prove themselves worthy of the name Arjuna. My courtier Totus, that's my steward, has offered to travel to the Yuan Empire on a mission to bring glory to the to the Khaganate, or Delhi Sultanate. Please, my lady, he says, let a humble servant strive your relations with the Emperor of the Yuan Empire. Well, he doesn't think differently of us, but be careful. He has an expansionist policy, which they could launch major invasions. They're stable, so they could do it at any time. I could send my nephew if I want to get some grace, but... However, with you there, you ugly bastard, um... I think I would say, what a brilliant idea. Go with my blessing, or... Who else is more qualified in these sort of things? But I kind of need you here. You're well skilled. You're just some guy. And he's married to my sister. Oh, nephew. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Balvan would give a better impression of us. So off he goes to Dan Huang. Yeah, just screwing with my family a little. Keeping Hastinapur because resource. Want to keep Lahore because that's additional money for the trade post that they're under construction for additional funds. And these two here, resource. So, yes, it's rather tempting to try to keep them all for yourself. While well, meanwhile, well, keep your eyes on a western border. The Okane made attack soon. Uh, they're already attacking the the caliphate which means the caliphate cannot call a jihad I mean if they call a jihad for Persia I'll be willing to join it'll be a struggle but I'll be willing to join just to get them off our back <laughs> basically it's the last thing that anybody would want and when Delhi is fully converted to Sunni I'll send them over and see to if he wishes to you know, accept. In fact, we're going to start trying to improve relations so they, so we can just write letters to say, please don't attack us. But I think swaying will have to be the way because I don't want my Grand Vizier to screw things up. Oh. Well, if you can impress... The marshal is for you then. But keep in mind, it's my brother. He's an imperial courtier, so he has spent a great deal within the imperial court in his profession in navigating in its many intrigues and shifting alliances. As it's still zero imperial decay, it's already in the first two months. Now the factions are formed. Glory, prosperity, tradition, and court. So, here's what it is. Um, the glory faction strives for prestige and the spoils of war. So their mood is improved by good relations with its members, which already is. Granting a land attack to any of its members. Any member appointed to the Liege's Council. Liege having higher prestige, winning wars, holding tournaments, and minimum obligations. And opposite for the mood that could be worsened by. Prosperity strives for wealth and a healthy economy. And they say Liege having high wealth 
Well, it's not that high for me, but I'll work on it. Since we live in a part of the Silk Road. <laughs> and uh, they also be happy if we... If I have more authority. And Mimmenberger obligations. Tradition. Tradition strives for piety and supremacy of religion. And winning religious wars, especially holy wars. Indulgences and charity. That's another thing. You know. And a court faction, which includes holding feasts and minimum obligations. They're all neutral because they just formed it, so... There's so much to please. Only one is a Muslim, and the three of them are uh, Hindus. Again, can't convert anybody. And you can't tell them to demand the force religious conversions. I mean, we can do that if they have uh, improved relations, but I kind of want to stir things up, you know? Let's say if they rebel against me, we can crush them. And that's piety when we fight against the infidels. Piety, which I need to change those laws. Yes, it's friendly. Also, be careful when you fight against... I mean, you want to go up to Kashmir, you can do. That's technically part of the bet, and not India. Not Hindustan. But all I can say is just be patient. We'll get that piety up if we can convert this province. So let's just take it easy here. But if either of them, particularly the Sunni Adawa, the strongest of the Hindu um, kingdoms, then we can... Um, oh, what is going on? What did you... For Tirabukti. That's for up there. And uh, they are defending against them because the Sunni Adava wants to make them a tributary state. Okay, here's the opportunity where we can start that holy war and get that little area. And so they don't come to against us. Chauhan is uh, defending in a holy war. Okay, everybody's keeping them busy. That's what I like to see. And they're not at war. I mean, I don't have any missions yet, but I guess it's high time to do that. It's not only to grab a piece of land and later give it to somebody, but it's to help me get some piety to have the main centralization. Because we do things differently around here. Because this is the first time in any of my Crusader Kings 2 series here on the Lord Master channel where I play as a Muslim. I've been hesitant on it for many years, but now, well, I have a reason to, and it's for, due to this historical character, which I find it fascinating. Alright, let's begin, and do it quickly. And I'm gonna need all forces over here, to basically just dogpile on them. But be careful, they may raise the forces of, uh, whatchamacallit, Arjun, the, the, um, Arjun. And due to my very high martial skill, wearing uh, my armor in combat, because I ain't scared. Starting to think the Sultan might fancy me. Hey, it's not appropriate. Listen, you're an old man. And I'm not ready for love yet. Grandmaster of the followers of Arjuna. See, this is what I was worried about. They've been hired. And Delhi is a serene province. Just the way I like it. This is why we need to bring everybody together. The followers of Arjuna are 2,000 strong. In fact...
Where's their headquarters? They don't have a holding, but apparently their headquarters is in Rantambor. So that's why we will link up in Vrarata. Only the Parara Kingdom will join, which they are pretty strong, but we're going to try to get together. We need to bring everybody together before we take them on in battle. Which means more glory for me. And don't forget the piety that you'll get for slaying against the infidel. Yeah. I mean, no doubt they'll crush the Abbasids with their might. But let's try to establish friendly relations. Hopefully. Okay, I'll speed it up a, in a bit. I'm just trying to think of something. But it's entirely possible that we can just take this area without a fight. History is a subject that's always fascinated me, and I have spent the last few weeks studying the campaigns of Ashoka the Great. There are many lessons to be learned from his conquests. I should devote more time to studying this. Which again, we live in India, the text is different. And if I ever feel like it, I can hold tiger hunts for myself just to, you know, add more pride to it for the prestige. Hulagu was happy to oblige me, and, and now um, I have some time to spend with him. I'm confident I can convince him that how alike we are, and he stands only to gain from our friendship. We could finally talk in private as he'll spend a few days with me. But quite honestly, I don't think we have a lot in common, so eek. But I have pretty good diplomacy. For him, he's not so diplomatic. He only understands the sword. Let me get a drink. That's water, by the way. I don't drink alcohol. That's in both Islamic contexts, which is prohibited but not forbidden. And plus, I can't drink alcohol in real life. <laughs> I'm not saying it'll probably kill me or allergic to it, just... I don't know. Just don't give me any ideas, alright? Stick with the program. So I think these days have really helped me in getting to know Hulagu and to know and appreciate me better. We spend most time visiting my domain, discussing the most um, disparate of topics. I hope I haven't taken it away from any important work, such as, you know, attacking the Sunni Caliphate. You know, that Caliphate that we appeal to. I mean, I wish I could help you, but don't you know they're very strong? Listen to yourself. <laughs> Was Razia really z z a zealous character in real life? <laughs> Who else? The Thakur of Gawal from up north. Getting outflanked. I don't know about this, but I'm present. Let me take center attention. And I guess these are the best commanders available. For the first years. Yeah, they're going back to Rantambu. Which we can attack them now. While everybody else is still gathering. But not terribly worried about them. But bear in mind that the Grand Master here is a holy warrior, which is gonna put a dent on our forces because of their damage against religious enemies. And I am no holy warrior. Oh no, this is just my first.
couple of months of this reign. Of this warrior sultan. Okay, I'm gonna keep using that time. Good to see you. But you're my spy master, by the way, but at least you'll cooperate more. Once the movement's locked, move in. Everybody. I'm taking an awful risk. Crusade against our religion. Jerusalem, isn't it? Yep. Targeting the Sultan of Egypt. They want Jerusalem back. Which again, it's too far away for me to participate. You should only be concerned yourself in Hindustan. I mean, would the Caliph be mad at me if I did not take part on the defense for Jerusalem? I mean, we don't have enough ships. I mean, our coast spans from the Bay of Bengal at the Ganges Delta. And not much coast here. If I had Gujarat, that would be enough. Then I'd be willing to... Well, it's a long way to ship them all the way over there to the front line. Well, no. Stick with Hindustan. And plus, beware of the Ilkhanen. But if the Ilkhanen were to be Sunni, then that would be a great effort for the defense. So, movement's locked, so. All forces head to Rantambu. Which, again, definitely gonna put a financial strain, but we hope for the best. I know the domain is too big, and I'll have a deal with in the future. Again, to your usual positions, and I want the center. It's only the hunter and the man with the inspiring leader has the only experience. I have a personal combat skill of 68. <laughs> the Rajput doesn't have much combat experience, but what of the Grand Master? Oh, he's better than me. <laughs> we shall see. If we see each other in battle, I'll be willing to fight for my life here, but I think that's too risky. You're going to combat without a proper weapon and a proper armor. I mean, look, this Punjabi man here, he's got the sword of Muhammad somehow. I want that sword <laughs> because of the personal combat skill. And yet the only way to obtain it is to um, is to seize it, which means the character has to be imprisoned in order to seize an equipped artifact, such as this one. Which means the only way to do that is to plot to fabricate treason. But it's too early for that sort of thing. Don't do it right now. But we're coming in. Because the bear complain about the conditions brought up by the present state of war, as I need to keep the big picture in consideration, they talk about the suffering of their community and disclose both their restlessness about the present situation as well as concerns ab about the future. There is a local cost in Vera in the present war. It's a restless province now. <sighs> Which is no good. And of course, we don't have enough piety or anything for that matter. We'll be there on the 3rd of May. And we will catch them. I ask your forgiveness if I've done something to offend. I obviously wouldn't dream of associating if facts could conspire against you or your enlightened rule. You are forgiven. Alright, here we go. 
our first taste of combat. My first taste of combat. The Grandmaster leads the charge, but I may have to avoid a duel of them because my personal combat skill isn't high enough to take on a man such as him. And he's a formidable fighter, and I am not. Okay, we've won this battle, which was a slaughter, but you got 15 piety. But um, some of that goes to me. Keep that well in mind. Where are the forces of uh, Paramara? Not visible, but they're on their way. No one's going to oppose them, but another formidable fighter. But no sign of Yadava forces, which, again, they're the only ones that are almost of a match to us. Unless they bring the followers of Arjuna along, and then they're going to be more of a match. So how long would the siege take? Well, days. It'll increase when we bring more men in here. We need better men for this. Not coming to besiege Delhi? Fine by me. Oh, there they are. Those are the ones we're looking for. Should we engage them? That means a lot more piety. Yeah, that's a lot of them. But it's plain, so it's fair game. Oh, by the way, how long is that crusade? When is it going to start? In two years. A righteous imprisonment? What's the plot? Discredit. Oh, no, don't do that. He's a good man. He's a good steward. Plus, I didn't want to send him to China because I need him here. I need his talent. So he can get taxes from him. Always the center of attention. Really? So you're better than him. So you've increased your marshal thanks to the training by our marshals. Thank you. And uh, Basbuga has become a respected commander ever since that battle here. Well done. I like to be a respected commander one day. That would increase my marshal. <laughs> and just to go to show that she's more than just an effective administrator. <laughs> Let's attack him. <laughs> For the glory. Before we can besiege him. So yeah, they're, they just, they're stomping themselves. So we'll take on some of them, but not all. Most, not all, I should say. Yes. You're not going to discredit anybody anymore. Really? They sent a Jayan to battle? Of supposed man of peace? Peace. 
So it's just to, I mean, they're not from Brentenburg. They're not defending their country. Or not coming to the Air Allies. But they're fighting hard. I'll give them that. No duels yet. But we captured a mayor. Which I'll be willing to ransom because... Source of revenue. Oh no. Okay, who's this? Also, just became a respected commander after these two victories. So, Razia is now a respected military command veteran. If two battles considers you a veteran. But, let's put in command quickly into these areas. And now you become a respected commander also. Well, I guess these are my best men. Now you may begin your siege. Let's just get this over with. They're in a way. But we'll send reinforcements if necessary if it doesn't go our way because we'll be taking a river crossing penalty, but it's still planes. Yeah, a little more money just to keep it going. And take a few holdings and you'll win with me. That's all I got. In this war, this opportunity to prove my medal in combat has opened my eyes to, to my true potentials of war. My personal combat skills are improving. May Allah guide my heart, hand, and steel. He got a bad tactic. Failed crushing charge tactic. Failed advance. He was an incompetent. I've learned many lessons from this battle. Aside from the application of theoretical tactics my mentors taught me as a girl. I've learned to definitely isolate an opponent in the thick of the front. Um, bring all my focus and concentration to bear upon him. And then within but a few rounds of melee, swiftly execute him. I am proud of my clear progression to a greater warrior. Still, I have more lessons to learn. Again, she may be a skilled fighter, but it's only a matter of time before she becomes a formidable fighter if she fights a few more battles. Alright, we got the piety that we wanted. Now let's, um... Increased centralization. And you can't change it again until 10 years. Which will have more piety by then. So that'll put a... That'll be better. And if only I were to marry somebody with high stewardship, but that can't happen. And plus, if you want to be the next ruler, well, you gotta prove yourself. Did I say warrior? I mean the next, um... Kagan. Sultan. Whatever term you want to use. You know, continue engaging combat with the small army. Knowing that we have them on the ropes. You know what, we can engage them right now. 2,000 strong. I'll take command of this and, and give me my best. Basboga, you've become a distinguished commander. 
Well, let's continue with that distinction. We'll take it to the jungle. And smaller reinforcements will be on the way. We're keeping the main force to besiege the area. But they're looking forward to return. Which we'll have them dealt with too. Because I really want to improve my... Education. No. Combat skill. One morning... I wake up before my guards have attempted to rouse me. Uh, I hear excited chatter from coming from the main hall. As I open the door, there's a bustle of servants filling the palace. Balvan has returned from the corp of the Protector General, they gossip. And he comes bearing gifts? Excellent. Thanks for the money. What do we got here? This painting shows the flow and beauty of Chinese writing. Clearly the work of a true master. Some prestige, and at least a few mares will like me a little more. And plus, since you have an artifact, that means you're going to have to assign a treasury guard. So no one should try to steal it. So you're at the max of the attackers. All you need is occupy a few holdings, and you got them. Grandmaster himself, um, but I'm not ready to take him on personally. Trade post complete. Razia, you haphazard brute. <laughs> I don't know if that's right to call her a brute. <laughs> she's not cruel, nor she's, you know, physically strong. So, yes, yeah, she says, you haphazard brute, a shout carries through the jungle where I'm fighting a close battle alongside my personal guards. In the distance, I see enemy reinforcements coming away. Listen, I begin my soldiers. <laughs> you know what we have that they don't? Each other. I'm an inspirational leader. Oh, this character has a way of reaching directly into the hearts and minds of soldiers on the battlefield. And not just with a sword. Increased morale, damage, and defense. Very good trait. The Chandela Kingdom has joined. That means it's only a matter of time before the Adava joins. Which is going to cause a lot of problems. For our campaign. That piece become stubborn. We got them all. Haven't become um, distinguished yet. So come on, more battles for me. <laughs> Even though it's not going to increase the war score anymore, all we need is to have those holdings. Now. I've heard of a man who lives in Depapur is blessed with supernatural abilities, such as being able to survive any injury, even decapitation. Rumor has that he's acquired that he has acquired his abilities after accidentally encountering with otherworldly spirits, particularly a young immortal woman who is now his servant, and how they travel the land fighting demons and such supernatural threats. Well, you're in, in India after all. I could just get piety immediately, but no. I'll just say, tell me more about these stories. So, for ten years, and for me, about a year, that I'll be highly amused in ten years, it's Legends of the Demon Slayer and the Immortal Servant Girl. What is that a reference to? Anybody doesn't know it? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying this is exclusive to Indian. I mean, it happens to any part of the world, in fact. Is that a reference to something?
we'll have this holding soon as I will fight one more battle for piety and for um, distinguished service of the command and um, try to improve my personal combat skills to become a formidable fighter even though we're taking a river crossing but we don't care we're gonna win this one no matter what wait What up? Send out reinforcements quickly. We're getting routed. Think that river crossing may have cost us. We got too big headed for this. War scores at 100%. You can end this right now, but... We don't got two days. Oh, they're just here just in time. Even though my battle's already over. Hundred glory. And request military training. That's another thing I would need. Just end this battle, then we'll end this war. Am I still in command somewhere? Just wondering. I mean, this battle wasn't a defeat. It was still continuing, just as we're, you know. Still present. All the other leaders, including myself, it's just too many individuals to name. Even casualties, but we just barely won. Barely. The Protector General, uh, Megatu of the Western Protector, has decreed that the fury of heaven shall rain down upon. It's a I cut to you a fuki. That's a mouthful. The Chinese armies have begun their march, and the count, if not hiding, Fuki can only hope to stand tall. His borders are attacked with the full wrath of the Yuan Empire. This could get ugly. Now they're ta they've uh, successfully, obviously, defeated the Caliphate, but now they're going to war against somebody else. That's against the Rome, which they'll put up a struggle, but it ain't going to be enough. They're going to get horrifically slaughtered, and this is just a single county conquest anyhow. I don't think they'll launch a big invasion. I don't think they have the capability to. County conquests will have to do. But anyways, and also Yadava did join, so it's already over for them, and we'll get another hundred piety. That's for starters. So they say that we vassalize them now. What you got there? Oh, it's going to take a while to recover. And yes, you can see there's blood on her face because she's, you know, been through a lot from that conflict. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Don't go through that again. Actually, there is no Holy War cooldown. Really, I thought the rules say... I mean, yeah, this is Dark Ages stuff. I still have the same rules set. Extra CB cooldowns. 
Do you hold my mask? I had that turned off. I didn't know that. I mean, you could just holy war whoever you like without, you know, the cooldowns or whatnot. Well then, that changes things. Here. Got it now. So just enjoy your victory for now. Even though you're slightly above the limit. Oh, by the way, since you have this many counties... That means if you wish to form the, um, the Grand Madrasa, you've got to have a thousand gold and five thousand piety. Oh, my vassal Sultan, uh, governor of the Sumer Kingdom, has requested that a lower rank vassal to serve him rather than me directly. Yeah, they mean kingdom because he's of Sindhi culture. Oh, and present with vague promises. I was about to say what they were talking about. Oh yeah, someone served me directly. Well damn, I should have just given him instead of giving him vague promises. But I think he already likes me well enough. Now I feel slightly guilty for this. Oh dear, oh dear. What do we got here? Fabricate evidence of treason. No. Fabricate of treason. And you want to kill Simbala the Hunter, who is my spy master. Don't do that, mother. And you want to kill some Rajputan. Okay, that I don't mind. <laughs> and I know it's kind of early, but nobody's on the bounty board. But give it a few years, and since this is a large realm, you'll start seeing them pop up in no time. Also, raiders from Kalinga Ganga, which I hope they can handle it. If not, then, then it's not. Yeah, this is why you need to don't do wars too constantly. Excuse me. And now that you have these, um provinces uh, of the trade posts we can start making money off of them since it's stable and we can improve upon it too most of the advances I'll be getting is going to be from culture so I respect the commander friendly Friendly, friendly, friendly. All good. Yeah, you're going to have to please these folks still. And after all this, no sign of Imperial Decay. Well, I'm trying to convert a province. But you know what? Maybe, just maybe... Once the um, ambition is complete for the war focus, I may switch it over to, um, oh, I don't know, either business or stewardship, just to have that limit and improve upon it. So I can hold all this. Or 
We'll think about seduction later. But not before the age of 45. Can usurp the title of Raja of Moru? Which that's gonna cost you. Which, uh, what is this? Conqueror. This character is a famed conqueror and has been known to stop at nothing and get what they want. That was a raid from over there. And since they're sitting in Islamic country, it's likely that they'll convert to Islam at a later time instead of me telling them to say, hey, would you like to convert? We can cooperate together. Embezzlement, embezzlement. You know what? I don't think I should just try to try to even stop all of their plots. Although you could hit auto stop plots, but I do not see any that relates to me or killing people of great importance to me. Claims that he would be a better steward than Totus. Are you sure? 14? 17. Okay. You're my new steward now. That's what I like to see. Just wait till you reach 300 gold then. Spend it on improving for those silk trade posts for you to prove your money on. But you make up a pretty good amount. And don't forget the subsequent money that we get from Blacksfield. Ivory Hunter's Lodge, and Incense Workshop. And I'm not going to spend my money to please them more. But, I w but if only somebody were to say, Hey, I would like to be a, a Grand Vizier. I'm better at this job than he is. But he's a powerful vessel, and I kind of don't want to make him mad. But at least there's nobody that's threatening claims or independence at me. That's good. Just like the way it is. <laughs> Again, I called for training and I've yet to receive a, um... We'll be patient. Also, by the way, that search for the smith... It's going to be a lot more expensive because since I, this is an Empire tier and you're going to get tier 3 weapons, jewelry, and um, armor. So don't borrow money from Jewish merchants. Your monthly income is good. I've been waiting for someone to teach me about warfare. Sometimes someone answer my call. Dogan has stepped forward and to teach me this, some of his fighting skills and tricks. Oh, that's my marshal. All right, somebody here locally. Instead of from all the heck way over there. And if the domain gets out of hand, I may also appoint an overseer in the future. So your first priority is improve the Silk Road trade posts for additional income. And then raise up money to 300 to get your own weapon. And then, after two years, get your own armor. <laughs> as long as they don't take that sword of Muhammad away from him. They say a mad alchemist or wizard lives in Hastinapura. Dabbling in dangerous arcane arts uh, such as trying to find a potion in immortality. Or pillaging graves for the bodies of dead maidens to sate his unnatural desires. It is said in his um, hut are thousands of profane scrolls and potions. However, no such madman can be found anywhere, according to the official authorities. Huh. 
that mad scholar's got to be there somewhere. Heck's going on over there? Declared holy war against the Thakur of Gug. Over here. Uh, inherited a realm. One of his. The Timas. That I will have to give away. Oh, and also I inherited his wealth. Oh, good. For once, I'm glad he kicked the bucket. Of course, I don't think um, Razia would ever say that. Not the kick the bucket part, I mean her being vengeful about the guy who just died. And it's like, oh, good, money. But then again, I'm not sure, all right? <laughs> Stubborn's okay. So again, he submits to a harsh training program. Whether or not his advice are worth listening to is up to me. Again, 10% chance of getting a trade. But the point is just... This is a martial related thing, so just be wise on what the texts say and what could be good for you or not. February, right? And I can't participate too far away from here. Unless I have all of Sindh and Gujarat... Then it would be much manageable to send ships um, to the front line. If I wanted to contribute in defending Jerusalem. And, um, and as for the Hajj pilgrimage, which again, you can only take it any time. But that's only if you have an absolute reason to. It's not something that you should do when you turn 16 and then... You'll just say, hey, you did a pilgrimage this early in your life. No, no, no. you got to have a reason for it. And that time has not come yet. Yes? Ah, oh, so that's what happened to him. Well, you may want a good luck with that, uh, Vizier, because she doesn't want any sexual advances. Again, <laughs> so as I said, just good luck trying to get her going. Thanks, I should spend some time in meditation to sharpen my senses. That I will not do. That's not a real military activity, and content trait isn't that interesting. And as I said, just wait till 300 gold. Then I will spend it on getting myself a weapon. Why haven't you stopped them? It's usually the vassal's job to keep away raiders. And I am not going to raise my forces to deal with them. Yeah, until the income is approved and when the domain size is right, then... And only then we'll can we'll probably get our own retinue. Every country has one, but why haven't we? And since we're a Turkish culture, this is the special one. Um, sepai, which is heavy cavalry and horse archers, which sounds like, and it's attack only, so that's really really good. But of course, there are cheaper alternatives. He believes that standing under a waterfall would help my body. That one you gotta accept. My studies and training have taught me the general tactics of flanks and center. I, but I can hardly master everything. I must learn to create choke points. Um, that one I should go for. For Battlefield Terrain Master. Which you get narrow flank bonuses. Um, in certain areas. I mean as much as I like to be the direct leader. 
But I'm not always on the center of attention, you know. Because, you know, that honor goes to some of the commanders who became more distinguished. Whereas I'm just only respected. Which I can increase that if I fight more wars and participate in many battles. <laughs> Maybe take part in battles against raiders in the future. Oh, he's from here, locally. Um, you believe for him to do a better job? Sorry about this. Just the man I'm looking for. Jamal, what do you think you're doing? Oh, just some guy. He's got a pretty good chance to diplomacy skill, but not as good as some of the others. Oh, big income from the resources in, in this is so you know what? Get me the armor smith. The armor smith. Got that just a smith. So send one of them looking for a smith to fortune. I know I don't have the sword of Muhammad in my hands, but I need something just as good, so a weapon smith to forge me a deadly weapon. So I'll send word out send out word that I'm in need of a weapon smith. That's what I want. Just and fair in all things. Your people rest easy in the knowledge that no matter what, I can always be dependent on to, to observe the rule of law. Law should govern. I gain a bit of party and the mood of the tradition factions improved. So it's gone neutral now, so what can I do to please you? Have more piety? I'll try. Indulgences and charity. Says that that the both uh, talk of, at long length about strategy. My guts tell me he doesn't know what he's talking about. What do you mean? Oh, he's shy. He's the opposite, but I'll just say that um, yeah, vice ignore. Turkish culture. It's the reason why she's wearing that for those of lower rank. And that's the reason why I'm not dressed like that. In fact, in real life and actual history, Razia never wore a veil. She never did. Even more. Keep improving. Thanks to the resources, thanks to the silk. Which again, here, we control. Well, n just these two are built, but in the future this will be built, that will be built, and so will this one. And potentially one of them gold if it doesn't get out of hand with what the heck is going on here. I better start creating tiles one of these days. Razia, I have an opportunity that may interest you. There's a war going on that that could use a few good men like you. A few good men like you. Okay. Um, uh, the perfect opportunity to do some real combat to test skills. Contact Kagan Jamuga and receive his permission to help. The Kagan of Mongolia? What is he up to? That's far away from here. Defending against Chagatai conquest of Kashgar, and also defending against the Marjana conquest. Wait a minute. Oh, the Golden Ord. The vassal of a Golden Ord, I should say. It says help him in a war, but they mean this kind. Either directly join, which is too far away from here for a defensive wars, which means both. Both of this. Even if we don't live that far away from the Chagatai. But it would be a waste of time and money to bring all forces on mass and then get up to those areas. I could send them money or send them troops for about two years, which lowers our levy size of reinforcement and all, but more piety. 
Well, party's not really a priority right now. Just send them money. Know that your help is appreciated and welcome. Your advice will help me wage the war more efficiently. I'll make sure to spread the words about your assistance in the matter. May you find your glory. He is most welcome. Greetings, Tirazia. I've heard that you got involved in some war in order to spread our fame, even if it's only given some advice. The Ring of Honor is renowned for its expertise in the matter. It is only a stepping stone towards greatness. But again, I'm not going to rank up until I get my weapon. Again, I'm going to ignore your advice on that. Yeah, just hold on and spin. My Marshal Dogon Overhead has told me about a remarkable website residing near Shortcut. He suggests that I invite the man to my court to see his work for myself. If he managed to impress me, I could order my own custom made item. My training is over. I've endured a lot more or less relevant training techniques from my instructor, but in the end it was worth it. I am better for better prepared for the battles ahead, but I could always Improve myself more. Onward to glory. Trying to improve it. That's what I'm trying to work on. Once the weapons smith's craftsmanship has been checked by my most knowledgeable attendants to ensure the caller was sufficient, I received him in a throne room. He introduced himself as Master Ridvan and gestured towards numerous assistants. All were carried examples of his work. Does my cartoon have anything special in mind? Well. There's a large number of light of trains. So. You can never go wrong. Never could go wrong with a good scimitar. Scimitars may give a morale defense boost, a uh, morale defense bonus, I should say, to commanded troops. Yeah, these are all morale defense. Yeah, we do things differently around here. It's almost like a catchphrase. Baylor Bay, uh, talk Thomas. Is asking for some privileges. He claims he doesn't have enough wealth or armies to defend his own lands in case of attack by a neighbor. Should I trust him? If I give him these privileges, that's. and enforces the truth, that's permanent. But he's good enough for me, so I'll just. no, he will have to defend himself with peasants if he must. Can't be doing that right now. That's gonna mess with me in the long run. A scimitar, I see. Excellent choice, my cartoon, says Master Redvan, and calls for an assistant. Currently, several scimitars in his arms. I have a couple examples here. One must determine what one needs and how much one is willing to pay. Well, there was all Sevi Han as well. Oh my god! Woo! Thousand gold? You have any idea? I think borrowing money from Jewish merchants isn't enough, but if you were to expel the jewelry, that's the that's not even close to making up a such price. I mean I wanted the very best, but I failed to realize. Or you could just don't order anything and just say get out and wait ten uh, two more years and then go get it. Oh my And plus taking loans huge loans in fact and the interest rate that would come in I think I may have to gamble for that I will not go in the battle with anything but the very best so, so you're uh, this much okay so take a large loan and then borrow money from the Jewish merchants and since this country makes a very good income, thanks to the Silk Road and the local resources, we can make that money back with ease. We don't have to worry. Yeah, 
And when can I repay them? Until you have 100. Until after the weapon is made, okay? Because you don't want to wait a year. Because it'll increase the interest rate by 10%. And it's going to keep going up and up and up and up until you pay it. And of course, also got to repay the Jewish merchants as well. Created the Bear Bay like a Baka. During the afternoon, I went on to check the progress of Master Redvan. I walked in to see him getting my nephew, Prince Mahmoud, to help with the forging process. Together, they were lifting pieces of metal, and Redvan was showing Mahmoud how to mold the materials into shape. Not exactly what I'm paying him for, but a form of service nonetheless. Well, I'm giving him a martial education. He's already a trained fighter. That may work, so I'm glad Rivon is having one to be stronger. Again, this being an open succession, he could be a potential good candidate one day. You got one more year. Till next November, I'll switch the biz. I'll switch the focus to business, to help improve the stewardship education. No, not education. The skills. <sighs> it's been a long one. All right. As soon as the weapon is made, that's when we'll stop the episode, and we'll pay back that loan in the next. And hope in that next episode that Razia's life doesn't get cut short. Because, you know, that's what happened to her on 1240. And then Lahore. As you no doubt well known, I and those vassals who are part of my faction are your lowest supporters. To show our devotion, we send you this tribute of gold and silver. Oh, how much? That's it? Well, every little bit helps till we repay that loan again. Just don't act so surprised. But since you got all that grace. Um, and it's not until a thousand prestige I get to kowtow before the emperor. To get more grace. To get what I need from them. Uh, and peace deal is not one of them. A disaster has happened in the incense workshop a bit. Some of the workers died. And the infrastructure is falling apart without any medium intervention. Um, since workshop has to be terminated. Oh gosh, how much? Oh, not as bad. I'll take that. We'll be in debt for a bit. Give it a few months and then we're good. Created bear bear like a Kanya Kubja. But I lost my Cody Mount. While well, you're back in the job. And please convert Delhi. Our moral authority is higher than what the local Buddhists have. Don't you know? Who's there? Kabulian Liberation Revolt. Afghan Buddhists want those Mongols out of here. And they can't handle it. The status quo in China is over. China has been recently suffering from droughts and the people are starving as the Great Famine upsets the harmony of the Divine Land. The caravans and ships of the Silk Road have virtually ceased as, and the great Chinese artisans are simply trying to survive. They will not be able to assist its tributary states. Not interesting at all. Gandhara created. That reduces the value by 75%. We won't make as much. Last. The Okanate is now attacking the Hashashan in Dale. But there's no signs of slowing down with their event spawn troops that they got over there.
I knew there was somebody else trying to steal my artifacts. You don't have any artifacts of your own. Give me money, quick. Because I need to get out of debt. I'll forgive you for this, but you have to pay it to me. <laughs> you see, I can be taller. <laughs> In a ground announcement, the Pope declares another crusade for Jerusalem. The Christian lords gather from all across the world to bring Jerusalem and the fold of the Christian kingdoms and out of infidel hands. That Jerusalemite's land has been long under the tyrannic rule of the Mohammedan infidel Sultan al Kaban Nasser al-Din of the al Uyubi Sultanate. But with the upcoming Christian onslaught, it is only a matter of time before he will fall. God will grant a mission of, of sin uh, anyway, to everyone, partaking a righteous one. Those Christian heathens. That's all I gotta say about that issue. No, not that one, you... Interestingly, the Kingdom of Jerusalem itself is not taking part of Crusade because they're already in a war. Where's for them? Oh, uh, that's a lot. I wish I would've, uh, but I don't have enough ships to... Send our forces there. We got to pay interest on in our loans. Now it's ten percent interest. Yeah, well, yeah, you just paid some of that. That's what happens until you uh, repay it all the way. While I have no great love for Bebe of our son of the Bebe, I got no idea he despised me so much till I began hearing rumors of his hateful comments. When I last saw him at court, he glares, um, he glares, he shot me away to confirm my suspicions. So that's how it is, is it? Also, where is my weapon? Yeah, I'm going to speed up a bit. Again, we're just at the end of the episode. I was struck with nervous excitement when Master Ridvan announced that the scimitar was near its completion. Today I've received the master in my throne room. A sturdy box in his arms as he opens the lid. I find it almost impossible to breathe. What will you name it, my cartoon? Well, I'm not really a conqueror type. And I'm not that rich, so... The Golden Scimitar. To conclude this episode, here is her personal weapon. Named the Golden Scimitar, it is a weapon of exceptional quality forged by a master craftsman. The handle is adorned with ornaments made of gold and jewels. So it increases a bit of bonus for heavy foot troops, but mostly heavy infantry. Monthly prestige up, martial up, and especially personal combat skill up, but not as good as the Sword of Muhammad. Which I gotta figure out how to get that one of these days, which, honestly, the best option is to, um, I don't know, plot to fabricate treason just to say, hey, he's a bad guy, and we gotta imprison him, and then we imprison the man, unless he rebels, and then we'll put him in prison, and then take that sword, and I will have it for personal use. And it's a wonder how we start this series that, you know, artifacts are randomly generated and placed to wherever in parts of the world. And I didn't think this one ended up here in India, in Hindustan. So, we hope in the next, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Delhi Sultanate series. I guess that's what we'll call it that. Rather than a Kaganite, because of Turkish culture reasons. So, one thing's for certain. We just hope they don't attack us while we are just committed to, well, well, we better start making our money again until we repay that loan. Two loans, in fact. Um, and, uh, subsequent change of laws for even more centralization and be willing to take a business focus for a while to improve to improve the stewardship skills so that way I will 
not have any penalty for having over the limit. So we hope you tune into the next episode and hope that the reign of Razia continues without her life getting cut short and then this um, brother of hers takes over. But until then, so long for now.